All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the episode two of the as yet untitled Star Wars show on Outpost Unknown. My name is Matthew. Joining me is, uh, well, I think she's, I think she might end up being rebel scum, is uh, Rachel. Well, <laughs> I started to be offended and then I was like, mm, <laughs> this is accurate. <laughs> How are you, Rachel? I'm good. I just finished watching the second or fourth episode of Andor. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right about now. I'm on a little bit of a Star Wars high. I feel like I just want to like text Steve and Ronan right now and, you know, say something mean to them. Uh, I support this. Let's do it. Let's dance on their (laughs) Star Wars graves. (laughs) So yeah, we are here. We're going to talk about uh, episode four uh, of Andor. And uh, I will say up front now we could be hyperbolic i just finished watching this i don't know probably about half an hour ago uh, i'm gonna be a little hyperbolic i might be i might change my opinion on this next week but first there's nothing's gonna ever top the season finale of mando uh season two for me you know, when luke skywalker spoiler alert shows up to save mm-hmm. the day that that is just like an emotional thing that this show there's there's no way it's ever going to be able to to attain something like that that being said i think this might be the best hour of star wars television i have seen um Mm. and i don't know you you may may agree or disagree with that we can discuss it but i was like blown away by this episode of television absolutely blown away i i was thinking about how it's like they had to completely clear the decks there's it is it because it has eschewed everything that Star Wars has been in recent years, it has become, in my opinion, the best Star Wars thing going. And I mean, obviously, this thing is like made in a lab for someone like me, like the politics of it, the ethos of it are all things that I'm totally going to connect with. But it's beyond that. I mean, the performances when we get into like Sarsgaard and the actor who plays Mon Mothma, it is just, it is, this is like the next level of Star Wars. The, and the set design, all of it. I, I could not agree with you more that this was some of the most compelling TV I have watched in a long time. Well, let's, I, I, I hesitate to even be able to try to, to discuss <laughs> the plot of this episode. And the reason why is because I'll be, I'll be upfront with the, the listeners out there. As soon as I'm done uploading this to Outpost Unknown, I'm gonna immediately go watch it again <laughs> because <laughs> there there was so much there was so much stuff and just pure joy in this show in this episode that I I honestly I didn't catch all of it on the mm. first first watch through. Um, I'm still a little bit confused about you know what exactly Cassian is doing with this rebel group and and how that all came about um just because I was focused on all these different things that were going on Mm -hmm. um but what's a what's sort of like a high level synopsis of this show like I took notes (laughs) I took notes because last time I I felt bad I was on the spot and I was like no this will not happen again and there's so many interweaving plot lines and new characters I was like oh no no let's pause pull out a notepad I need to write this down so so here's what happened in this episode high level we pick back up Andor is on sh- on Luthen's ship and Luthen makes him an offer basically to continue to do the same little petty stuff that he's been doing all along um these little nothing jobs and eventually die that way or he could join and do something that matters and to sweeten the deal he offers him a shit ton of credits <laughs> so yes. he essentially agrees and um he you know, much to the chagrin of the group of people on this planet, Aldani is in, insinuated into this group of rebels who are three days away from this suicide mission where they're going to be um, doing this big heist on an imperial garrison to steal the imperial payroll that's there, which is really interesting and like this incredible. Yes, because it, because you realize you you realize like it's it's the empire. They have to pay their people to keep their people like happy. <laughs> Right. right. So, so it's some. It's not like you're you're stealing some like crazy, you know, you think it's like something as simple as like, oh yeah, if the imperial employees don't get paid, they get angry. So it's yeah. it's like you're you're hitting the imperials. It's not like oh we got to blow up the Death Star. That'll hurt the imperials. It's mm-hmm. hitting them 
where it really hurts. You know, I was like, oh, this is incredible. Yeah, <laughs> this it's is so the great. weaponizing of de- the the bureaucracy. It's so smart. Yeah. It's so <laughs> like, and we never even thought about it. You know, like we're always like after big plans, and but no, like this level of disruption is exactly kind of the like small level of disruption that you get in these kinds of sort of uprisings. So I think it's pretty brilliant, and they're using this cool like celestial event for their big getaway. So we have like kind of a heist thing happening, but there's more. We also learn some stuff about Luthen, who has been very mysterious up to this point, where we see him slip on his disguise and head back to Coruscant, where he's like posing as this antiquities dealer and meeting with Mon Mothma. I was like, I was like, oh, it's like Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities at Galaxy's Edge. Yes, it totally is! I kept looking at all of the things that were just set up, and I'm like, I want to know where every one of these things came from. Give me a story. I want to know about the armor. The armor that's standing behind you with the spike spikes. Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. (laughs) <laughs> it is rad so we find out that that he's kind of involved um on coruscant and that she is involved with the funding of the rebellion um and that she wants to bring someone as of yet unnamed into the circle also we find out her husband sucks fuck and that it's... guy fuck that guy like i want him he, he spent two minutes on screen and i despise him more than on any site. imperial on the, in this show <laughs> I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, wait a minute, how is Mon Mothma, Mothma married to this guy? <laughs> like, how is that even possible? The complexity of the relationship is kind of, it feels revolutionary in its simplicity that he's like, you see that there is a power dynamic in their relationship and that he has a lot of resentment around that. That is a level of character that I don't necessarily expect when I pop on one of these shows and was delighted yeah. to discover his, what is his line? Like, why does everything have to be so like doom and gloom all the time? And like, <laughs> she's literally like fighting for like a rebellion here. Like she's got all this shit on her mind and he's just completely glib about all of it. it uh, I was like, I hate this guy. I, I want Vader just to show up and force choke him out. And walk out. <laughs> like invite oh. Vader to dinner and then Vader can just force choke him for being a douchebag. I mean, maybe that you were asked, if they're going to show up, wouldn't that be great if you just <laughs> spent the oh, dinner? <laughs> I, I will tell you, and I don't know, I, I don't know how much of this I'll get into, but um, at that sort of, it's not quite a dinner yet. I'm sure the next episode we're going to actually see this dinner. Um, and, and Mon Mothma actually looks at the guest list that her douchebag husband invited, and it is full of like Imperials. Like there's actual Imperials, but one of the names. Is, I, I think she said Sly Moore. And Ooh. Sly Moore, uh, that, that's a deep cut to, to Star Wars fans because Sly Moore is like one of the Emperor's, and this part of the timeline is one of the Emperor's most trusted allies. Um, she's actually in um, Revenge of the Sith. She's standing next to him when he declares, you know, a new galactic empire. She's the, the bald uh, bald woman with like, all white skin and like the crazy eyes yes that's her and the high and she, yes yes, yes. There, there are things about her i won't go into it because i won't spoil it in case they they do this in the or utilize this in the show uh i would recommend not reading anything about her but okay. she there's something about her that if they bring that out in the show i'm gonna just like orgasm like fan orgasm i'm gonna I be like be a solo show because you will have exploded yes yes i'm just gonna be like i cannot believe if they do what i hope they do i'm gonna say like tony gilroy let me just say he's he is a diehard star wars fan if they go the route that they may go with it um and it would make sense if this person's gonna be at this sort of dinner so we'll see we'll see mm-hmm. That is very exciting. I hope that actually happens now. Now I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. All right. So we meet Mon Motha. Um, finally, on the Empire side, we meet some new officers and a new, <laughs> like I said, bureaucracy. We meet Supervisor Deidre Mero, Major Partagaz, and Lieutenant Supervisor Blevin. And they all work for the Coruscant Imperial Security Bureau. The ISB. Um, <laughs> yes, which I, I don't totally understand, but I it feels like some sort of Homeland the, Security. Yeah, or the, the ISB. I, they sh- the ISB showed up 
I don't know if it was Rebels or Clone Wars, one of the uh, Filoni shows, they're basically like the, the spy agency. Um, mm. They're kind of like the CIA, if you want to think of it, of um, it. of the Empire, stuff like that. Uh, I will say that Dedra Miro is my girl. Um, I, <laughs> she, she as, a on, new, as a new like crush developed today oh yes yes as soon as she showed up on screen i'm like yep i want this i want this character to win <laughs> I want her, and, and here's the thing it's like um uh what, what's amazing about this is because i related to to uh, an aspect oh. of this character because there's there's a line there is a line where um she's new they they mentioned that uh like her kind of superior i can't remember the names of all these people like i just watched major the show. Par- partagas okay like he she's like hey look uh this thing that cassie and andor stole uh in the first three episodes it falls under my jurisdiction he's like mm-hmm. go kick rocks uh you're just trying to like enhance your career blah 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 and then she starts talking to like the greatest imperial uh leader guy since Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin who's <laughs> basically just walking in and telling like you guys are all fucking stupid I'm the one making all the decisions here y'all idiots and he mentions when she's bringing this up because she she says look I have some files on my desk this looks like a coordinated attack across mm-hmm. multiple things here uh, I don't know if she actually says like a rebellion is forming but it's clear she has already pieced this together and he does <laughs> this, he says this line because I am in the bureaucracy bureaucracy ladies and gentlemen so I can completely understand mm-hmm. and relate to the frustrations that <laughs> that uh, Dedra is having here and <laughs> the guy goes well you're just you you come from enforcement right and she's like yeah and then he basically just like well I, that's not what you're here for sort of thing and i'm just like that's how i feel every single day <laughs> it's like so what you're saying you, is you really relate to the character that is right and <laughs> yes so uh Dedra, yes she's my girl i mm-hmm, just give mm-hmm. me a show based on her <laughs> i will watch it <laughs> okay <laughs> So yeah, so she is on the hunt for what really went down on Ferrix. Um, she's looking for this NS9 Star Path unit, which I looked it up, and it would be very bad if they lost that. It it, it would track it tracks Imperial movements for nine parsecs, and it's totally yeah. untraceable. So for those of you out there who did not go to Google to look that up, that's what she's worried about getting her hands on. Um, and we get some like bureaucratic infighting where they're fighting over jurisdictional issues. And then, like you said, her boss has to come in and be like, listen, stick to what your, your sections. And he says something kind of cryptic to her about her being brought in to prove some kind of point, but that, you know, maybe her fellow officers are going to be questioning her. And I don't, I, I, I personally don't know what that is. I don't know if I missed it. Maybe you picked up on, is it just the enforcement? thing or do you feel like we're going to get some more information here i think we're going to eventually get some more information about what's going on and i don't know who the actress is who plays this um looking on imdb was it denise go i don't i don't know how to pronounce her last name g-o-u-g-h uh just like her facial expressions Mm -hmm. and how she expresses with her eyes is great i mean Across the board, the acting in this show is top it's notch. Next level. Um, but they, I, I love like these little moments that like cut to her or whatever, and you can, you you know exactly what she's thinking without her having to say anything at all, and that mm-hmm. is a mark of a really great actor when you can sort of convey that, and um, and so yeah. It, I think we're going to learn more about her. Now, if she turns out to be uh, a rebel spy, um, mm. rebel scum, I, I'm going to turn mm. on her. But right mm. now, <laughs> I want her to I don't, I don't the rebellion. Think so. I don't think so. I think she is on a crash course directly from our favorite, to our favorite space incel, Cyril Carnes. I think that's oh, that yeah. is that is, yeah, because we see what happens with Cyril Carnes, right? We yes, see the fallout. Yes of the attack on ferrix that he along with his supervisor and his fellow officers get dismissed and it's forces him to go back to his mama's basement <laughs> she slaps him he over <laughs> and, and my first thing is like um you know I, I don't know if this is sort of like they're trying to say like i mean like the, the culture of, of where he's from or something like they are so there's so much 
they feel so disrespected or something now. Like it's so such an embarrassment yes, that he is maybe very he, aggrieved. <laughs> he he rose up and then he's the cause of the because the empire is like you done fucked up and now we're taking over your little fiefdom here. <laughs> you know That's they're like literally stormtroopers outside walking the streets and you're all fired. Get the fuck out, sort of thing. And yeah, I have a different take. I oh, think okay, he, go ahead. Mom is, I think mom is mad that he left. That he up and we're gonna find out oh. that he disappeared. And that's why she slapped him, and he's like very much under the thumb of sort of like a domineering mother. Like it, he's very much our incel character. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. What do you think would be more interesting? Do you think that would be more interesting story wise, or do you think it would be sort of like the you know you've brought shame upon the entire system and everyone mm-hmm. I know because you brought the Imperials down on us? I mean, I I think both of them have potential to be interesting. I think the my interpretation would be different because it would be something we have not seen before. And I okay. think we're setting – we've been setting him up as this, like, simmering, repressed rage kind of agree, like grievance, um, feeling very – um targeted and like life is unfair like i feel that energy around him and so it would track for me that that it would be but i don't know you could be very right it could be an issue of them like being mad of his like that he turned on them and joined the empire although what a planet is he on is he on coruscant because i kind of feel that was my impression that he was on like one of the lower levels of coruscant it's possible. Yeah, like, that's another thing, like, I, I, I'm going to have to watch this show, like, mm-hmm. again, once it's all over, because there's so many different, I mean, they name drop Scarif in this, like, just a <laughs> throwaway line, oh, by yeah. the way, we're setting a bunch of shit, and we're yeah. setting it up on Scarif, and you're like, oh, yeah, in, like, two years, that planet's going to be blown up. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like, um, it, I, they, they just, they drop all of this stuff in here, and honestly, I mean, I didn't catch all of it. That's why I have to watch yeah. it again. Cause I'm like, yeah, this is so dense. This episode was so dense, introduced so many new things. I mean, I, I saw some criticism online of the first three episodes where people were like, Oh, it's just slow. It's just a very slow show. Come on. Um, I thought you know, the buildup is needed, but this episode just moved real quick. I, mm-hmm. I thought just bouncing to the, all of these different things. And again, we're setting up all of these characters I love every character on this show yeah. except for Mon Mothma's husband, who I hope <laughs> <laughs> But everybody else, um, and and they do these little things, you know. And I'm just looking at this from like a director's perspective, uh, you know, seeing these cool little things that they they don't do and stuff like Boba Fett, for example, when uh, Stellan Skarsgård. I know his name is Luthen. I just always call him Stellan Skarsgård. That sounds like a Star Wars name to me. <laughs> it so does I'm just sound like say a Star Wars name. Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, and we don't really know because there's a moment in here because it, he leaves Cassian on, on this sort of plane. There's, they, they do a moment where Cassian looks over because he's going to try to like, try to hear what what the conversation is outside Mm -hmm. it's just a little moment you get this little sort of glimpse into cassian andor's thinking and Mm -hmm. then just you know the little droid whatever says can i help you and it cuts away they didn't have to put that in there but they did because it adds i mean it's a five second clip but it adds so much to that character where he's like i'm not sure i trust this guy and what is he saying and then you cut to outside and Stellan Skarsgård is basically talking to this um, this rebel leader of this rebel cell, and uh, you know he's like he's he's fucking expendable. Yeah, if he doesn't work out, he's expendable. And you're like, wow, like this whole he just gave this whole fucking speech to this guy about man, don't you want to like die for something meaningful and join me, join me? And then he's literally when he's out of here, he's like, fuck this guy if he doesn't work out, just you know, <laughs> let him die. Uh, and then still in Scars, you still don't know about his character uh, much because I thought like he was going to be an Imperial or something. Like he was an Me Imperial too. undercover. That's what I thought. And then, and then like he's in front of the mirror and he's putting on like his, his, his wig and, and all that stuff. But there's this little moment where when he's mm-hmm. finished, it doesn't cut away. It's still in Scars Guard. He just kind of like laughs at himself a little bit. It's like this weird. Well, he puts Moment on his with the... mask. He puts on his, like, he's put on this wig and stuff, but then the mask. Yeah. And he's sort of this flamboyant. See that transformation happening. 
Yeah, and it's just it's just this right. little moment that mm-hmm. really makes the character. It, it says so much about that character and their mindset right. just by a little thing. And, uh, and yeah, I right. uh, you mentioned at the top the the set design. On Come this. on, forget about it. It this is. is- Incredible. This is like award-winning stuff. Like this yeah. has to be nominated and win. I mean, just the practical sets mm-hmm. that they mm-hmm. built for this thing. And uh, I think a couple episodes or on our previous episode, I, I mentioned that everything about I, uh, Star Wars is iconic. Like mm-hmm. literally everything from the original Star Wars is iconic. And part mm-hmm. of that is the architecture mm-hmm. of Star Wars, whether it's the mm-hmm. Imperial bases or you know the the huts that people live in on on um, Tatooine, and like everything about it is iconic. And I think a lot of the Star Wars stuff we've seen lately, like Obi Wan comes to mind. Those just like like bland, uninteresting buildings. Yeah, yeah they had they had a, they had a Star Warsy kind of feel to them, like a sheen, but this show captures what it's like. I mean, mm-hmm. they're on fucking Coruscant. That is the capital of the galaxy. Everybody's got money in these places, and they they spend it like crazy. And you have this intricate architecture and so many different varied architectural uh, pieces in this. And then the costumes. Mm-hmm. The costumes look so good in this. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. where, where was the money on Book of Boba Fett? Or Obi-Wan? <sighs> Which well, is why? where you think the money would be. It has all the brand recognition. But exactly. this just looks like the retro futuristic um head sort of I guess conference room at the the Imperial Security Bureau is stunning. And it, it does oh, it it looks flossy, but it also has just enough of a reference to that original like 70s retro futurism that it it feels cohesive to the original Star Wars. You know, yeah. it really puts you in that place. But this is this is what it looks like not on the front. This is what it looks like back at ba- at you know the headquarters where you know the money is. It's it's yeah, it's gorgeous. This, this and also on the other end of that on uh, what is this planet called? Uh, M something. But those huts that are around that the rebels are staying in, those also feel very Star Warsy, like very yes. referencing almost like indoor with the the construction yeah. with the, yeah with the natural materials. It just looks incredible. This thing looks. I mean, as amazing as that new technology is that they're using on the Mandalorian, I can't remember the name of it, but the, the screen volume. Thing, it will never replace as incredible as that is it will never when you see this you're like oh right this is like watching the thing versus some like amazing cgi practical effects you can be impressed but there's a reality to it like a a tactile reality to these sets that you just can't beat yeah and and that's the thing like a lot of the you know the original star wars films what people loved is like the varied locations like shooting on actual like yeah it's a desert but they went to tunisia (laughs) yeah (laughs) all these amazing (laughs) sand dunes and all this stuff it's like like the planet earth has amazing locations and um i can't remember you know in last jedi i can't remember that i the name of that island that luke skywalker's on Mm-hmm. Uh, but it looks stunning. You know, I remember yeah. that they had to get an actual permit from, I don't know if it was England or something, to actually go there to film. And it looks stunning and incredible. Had they done that island with with the volume, it just mm-hmm. wouldn't look as good. And what makes me kind of nervous going forward, it's like, okay, you've been feeding me the volume for all these Star Wars shows. Now I see one without using the volume. And I'm like, I don't think I really want to go back to the volume. Like, use it in spots here and there but man i i want the sets i mean it's going to be a damn shame who who tore these sets down these sets probably no longer even exist um send those fucking to disneyland and let me walk through them yes (laughs) (laughs) i mean to be fair galaxy's edge has some places it could use some new decorations so yeah yeah yeah. um so last thing i want to kind of touch on with this because we're going to try to keep these shows you know no longer than 30 minutes mm-hmm. um i do want to talk about sort of like this rebel cell right and the characters mm-hmm. that we sort of meet with this rebel cell so what are your thoughts on on these rebels who the red shirt energy is high with these people <laughs> <They're> <laughs> gonna die. oh especially that like little sweetie pie he's it's a wrap for that kid um uh, <laughs> 
we were talking last time about like do we feel like this can have stakes and then on the discord also you know we were arguing with steve about it i like how steve is an unofficial member of this podcast now uh, yeah. about how this can't have stakes and i was just like i see a body count that like a future body count that disagrees i think they're gonna start killing some of these people off and you know what good good yeah and that's the thing like with uh the thing with these characters is you can have stakes with all of these characters as long as the the writers and the filmmakers give them enough screen time to make us care about them yes. and make us want yes. to not see them die like mm -hmm. um and if you don't do that if like if these rebels had just shown up and at the end of this episode it was oh a tie fighter flew by and wiped them all out of course there's no stakes there because we don't get to know any of these people but that's the right. great thing and you know i i hated game of thrones absolutely hated it but what i will give it credit for is that um it did do that it took its yeah. time building up a lot of those characters and when they did die off it it impacted the, the, the show. It impacted yeah. the story that mattered, and those were actual stakes. Mm -hmm. We know going in that the vast majority of these people are going to die. Oh, it's yeah. whether or not we can become invested in them and want and care about them not dying. And mm -hmm. sort of like when they do, we say, oh, no. Like, if, if Dedra <laughs> dies, I might tap Ooh. out of the show. No! <laughs> I just have to tap out of the show. Um, well, so, I hope it happens in episode 23 then. Because... Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I'm like, what happened to her? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe she'll come back, uh, and maybe she's like, uh, co-running things with Thrawn. Maybe Thrawn finds her, Ooh. and they sort of, you know, bring about the new <laughs> the remnants of the Empire yeah. to try to take out Mando. And yeah, all that. I was looking around for Thrawn. I was like, I want to see his blue face somewhere in the background. Just give oh. me that. Oh, um, there's one other interesting tidbit that uh, was name dropped in here. I always forget the the name of the planet, like Midro. They, they mentioned that um, Cassian Andor uh, was fighting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for you know, on that midway, that that's the exact same planet that Han Solo was fighting on when he met Chewbacca. <gasps> so when Han Solo was conscripted oh. into the Imperial Army, that means Cassian would have been fighting on Han so with with Han Solo potentially side by side during mm. that those battles. Didn't they say only three survived? I think he said fifty. Didn't he say 50 people Did he survived? say 50? Okay. I, I thought he said 50 people He might have said 50. He might have said 50. But Han Solo hightailed it out of there. So he might not even yeah. have known whether or not Han Solo was one of them. It's just an interesting thing. You know, it's it's almost like uh, the writer was like, I'm going to throw this, like, thing in here. And it's yeah. going to get the internet, you know, geeks going, mm -hmm. oh, my God, is there going to be a story where we see Cassie and Andor just cross paths with Han Solo in, in this oh, battle geez. in a flashback or something, like, oh, which they geez. will not do. They will not do, but you know they're going to do it in, like, a comic book or some shit like that. Yeah. But, but oh, it's just for a matter sure. Of time. For sure. But, uh, Can we talk so, about my one point of concern? Sure, sure. The Kyber Crystal. <laughs> when oh, the Kyber yes. Crystal showed up, I was like, "This displeases me." <laughs> Is he? Are we? Get, yeah, I don't want any secret Jedi's. I don't. No, 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 no. No, I didn't you. get. I did not get the sense that there's going to be secret Jedi. Okay. Because um, okay. if you remember at at the beginning of Rogue One, Jin Erso was it? Galen gives her a Kyber Crystal necklace. Oh, she's got, she's got that okay. Kyber. It's not the same one that Luthen has, obviously his is like giant, um, but she also has a necklace with a kyber crystal. So what I think is going to happen is that might be some sort of symbol for mm. rebellion sort of stuff. Oh, I like that. Okay, now I'm back in. I've changed my mind. I'm no longer concerned about the kyber crystal. <laughs> yeah, like if, if Stellan Skarsgård turns out to be like Jedi Master Skarsgård. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> let's, let's not go there. Let's not go there. No. Um, so, but the fact that they name drop Sly Moore uh, mm. increases my feelings that we will see the Emperor at some point on this show. Um, but I don't know when. Could be next season for all I know. Um, but if they're already going to start peppering in people like intimately sort of close with Emperor. And Sly Moore was one of the only people in the Empire that knew he was Palpatine before he turned into or, uh, the Emperor. You know, he's like, oh, uh, or she, Palpatine. So as the, the senator from Naboo. So 
I don't know where they're going, but fuck, I'm excited. Um, and <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing I will say is like this: this show is like a good 45 minutes long. Yeah, it wasn't like 27 minutes like some of the Mando mm-hmm. episodes and stuff. It's like I got, I was satisfied by the end. Yeah. I wasn't like, man, I, I want more of this. Why, why are they mm-hmm. cutting this up into little pieces? Like they're giving us really good chunks per for each episode, which I yeah. uh, I'm all in, all in. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, if it continues like this, I will be delighted. I think the balance between the plot lines is really great because I'm invested in all three of them. Proceed, Andor. You four out of four. So. Yeah. And how, yeah. how crazy is it? Like we were watching uh, Obi Wan and Book of Boba Fett, and those are like six episodes each, right? Mm-hmm. And we're watching them, and we're like, God, there's only like three more episodes. When are they gonna do something? Like, when is something gonna happen? <laughs> And we have like uh, what eight more episodes of this to look forward to. Uh, yeah. Eight more weeks, two months. Yep. And yep. I'm just like, fucking yeah, love it. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, tell us what you thought. I guess uh, did you like episode four of Andor? Clearly, we did. Um, fuck you, Stephen Ronan. You're wrong. <laughs> as you always are. <laughs> and, uh, Readers. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back next week to talk about episode five. And uh, so, yeah, thanks everyone. Catch you later. Bye, everybody.